Google Chrome is often seen as the web browser to use. There's been alternatives for years, but a web browser really has to stand out if it's going to beat Chrome's performance and reliability. So in this video, I'm taking a look at Vivaldi to see if one of the world's most customizable web browsers is good enough to kick Chrome to the curb. Now, I'm going to be reviewing all aspects of Vivaldi, including speed, performance, and reliability, but customization is what really makes Vivaldi unique. In other ways, Vivaldi is similar to Chrome since they're both based on Chromium. Chromium is Google's open source browser engine that quite a few web browsers take advantage of. So the speed and performance of Vivaldi should be identical to Chrome right? Almost. In my testing, it felt like Vivaldi was not quite as fast or smooth as Chrome, so I ran some performance tests on browserbench.org to see how they compared. Chrome scored better in two of the three tests, suggesting that Chrome is indeed slightly faster than Vivaldi. I think some of this is also perception because Vivaldi does not have any loading animation, and this makes the browser feel slower and less responsive. This lack of animations is apparent throughout the whole interface, and the UI feels cluttered, dated, and stale. The layout is similar to most web browsers, but there's a lot going on. By default, you have the top bar with tabs and navigation, and a side panel with access to downloads, bookmarks, history, and more. There's also a bottom panel where you can adjust the zoom, take screenshots, and access developer tools. I don't really understand why there's a dedicated search bar when you can use the unified address bar for searches like in any web browser. Maybe it's because there's this dropdown where you can select other search engines? I I find it distracting, so I looked up how to remove it from the toolbar, and thankfully you can customize just about everything in the interface to make the layout exactly how you want. I also noticed the UI has two cloud icons, one in the top right corner to access open tabs across other devices, and one in the bottom left corner to access sync settings. But just about any layout gripe I have can be fixed with the customization settings. Vivaldi is like the Android of web browsers, everything can be customized down to the placement of each button. I get overwhelmed when I look in the settings menu because there's a checkbox for everything. However, there are many pros to this level of customizability. For example, when I first started using Vivaldi, I was used to the close tab button being on the right side of the tab. It was throwing me off every time I went to close a tab since the button is located on the left side by default. This got me wondering if I could customize this and move the button to the right side, and sure enough, you can. You can even customize the tab stacking UI and choose between a compact view, a two level view, and an accordion view. The possibilities are endless. You can go as far as adding custom SVG images for every icon icon in Vivaldi. I find this level of customization intimidating, and I prefer the simplicity of Chrome. But if you know exactly how you want your web browser, you'll love Vivaldi. There's quite a few themes to choose from, or you can make your own. But even though you can customize almost everything, one thing that drives me nuts is the data design for the buttons and checkboxes. Maybe there's a way to customize this, but every theme I try has the same stale buttons and checkboxes. They remind me of an old version of Firefox, and it may makes the browser feel much more dated than Chrome, Edge, Brave, or Safari. But regardless of how you customize Vivaldi, it will always let you hit that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe and click the bell, and you'll be the first to know when I drop new videos. Now, Vivaldi's main claim to fame is its infinite customizability, but it's got some powerful productivity features as well. Workspaces are an additional layer of separation within a browser profile, so you could have a personal workspace and a work workspace with different tabs and switch seamlessly between workspaces. I wish workspaces had the option of being containerized like you'd see in Shift, but unfortunately, they share the same cookies and extensions. Because of this, I'm not sure how useful this feature actually is, but it's still nice to have since Vivaldi's goal is to be the most flexible web browser around. There's also sessions, which are just saved states of open tabs, so you can switch sessions at any time, and you can also save default sessions, which will open the same tabs every time time you restore that session. The side panel in Vivaldi lets you add web panels for sites like Wikipedia that you access frequently. There's also page tiling if you want to view tabs in split screen view or in a grid. And the capture tool lets you take full page screenshots without any third party extensions. And you can save the screenshots as JPEG or PNG. Perhaps the most powerful feature of Vivaldi is chain commands. Think of chain commands like macros for your browser. You can string multiple actions together with a single keyboard shortcut. For for example, you could toggle full screen mode and reader view with a single command. Vivaldi even has a fully functioning mail client, calendar, and social network powered by Mastodon. 
I didn't test these since I find it irrelevant for a web browser comparison, but you might find some of these tools useful depending on your needs. Now, Vivaldi has a built-in ad blocker and tracker blocker, and I'm glad it does because native ad blockers seem to have the best functionality. Chrome is allergic to the idea of a built-in ad blocker. In fact, that's the last thing Google would want to do since their revenue comes from ads. And with Google plotting to make it harder to create ad blockers with the Manifest V3 extensions API, having a native ad blocker like you see in Vivaldi will become increasingly valuable. And speaking of extensions, all Chrome extensions are compatible with Vivaldi. Since Vivaldi uses Chromium, all Chrome extensions are compatible with any Chromium browser. And that's why the built-in ad blocker is such a big deal. Google's plot to deprecate ad blocker extensions also affects Vivaldi. But because there's one built in, you don't need an extension to do the work. So Vivaldi users are protected against Google's questionable decision. It's no secret that Chrome is not a privacy focused browser. In fact, the topic of privacy is barely mentioned in Google's marketing copy. There are a few privacy-focused settings in Chrome, but they're mostly to help protect your data from other websites. That's non-Google websites. Google is going to collect as much data as they want to target more ads to you. So if you don't want Google watching your every move, don't use Chrome. But is Vivaldi any better? After all, it's still based on Chromium, the same Google-born browser engine that powers Chrome. Well. Yes, Vivaldi is better at protecting your data than Chrome. Vivaldi's short, easy to digest privacy policy clearly states that they have no access to your browsing history, search keywords, or downloaded content. However, some of the story changes if you opt into Vivaldi Sync. The Sync privacy policy says that they collect browsing history to sync between devices, and it does highlight that a limited number of Vivaldi employees have access to this data for operational reasons. So you'll have to decide whether you trust Vivaldi enough to opt into the optional sync feature. If you choose not to use it, it just means that your browser settings and preferences won't sync between devices. Overall, I'd say that Vivaldi is much more trustworthy than Google when it comes to handling user data, so I don't have any concerns about using Vivaldi Sync. There are some privacy concerns when using any Chromium browser since Google has significant influence over the project. It's open source, so browsers using it can modify it, and they do, but if a browser chooses to support Chrome extensions, that's already a way the browser pings Google server and could potentially share user data with Google. But once again, from a privacy standpoint, you're much better off using Vivaldi than Chrome. So in the end, is it really worth making the switch to Vivaldi? Well, that depends on what you're looking for in a web browser. If you want a web browser with infinite customizability, Vivaldi is for you. I almost think of Vivaldi as a no-code browser builder. You can truly customize anything in the layout and UI. If you tend to prefer Android over iOS, you'll likely prefer Vivaldi over Chrome. iPhone users can enjoy Vivaldi as well, but I just want to paint the picture that Vivaldi is best for users who want to do a deep dive into the settings and customize the browser in every way to make it their own. Personally, I found Vivaldi overwhelming and complicated, and while I respect it for its impressive features and customizability, it's not for me. If you share the same perspective as me, well, you should still ditch Chrome. There's many alternatives that are more private and secure than Chrome, but still have a simple UI. In fact, I made a comparison video looking at the most popular web browsers that you can check out here.